Hello yeah, and welcome, welcome to, to the whiteness class. Yes, that's exactly what it was going to be. Yeah, I know. That's why I hurried up and took it. Okay, so I'm Jade done. won this round. Yes, yeah, she did. I'm going to just say I'm still sleepy because I literally just woke up from a nap. Absolutely. I mean, because apparently spring has sprung. Like they, It's before spring and, and now everything is pollen and you're like, oh, oh, so allergy medicine time. Oh, my word. So, so that means drowsy allergy. days are back here again. So, well, no, no. I mean, like, I know you just woke up from a nap and everything, but isn't this day gorgeous? Oh, it's a gorgeous. It's like beautiful outside. The sunrise, the sunlight anyway, the sunlight and the blue sky and the clouds. And then I made the mistake of thinking it was just like the other day when it was like 75 degrees out. I walked out in my she, short sleeves and I went, oh my goodness. She she forgot it's still winter. It's March, y'all. I mean, I don't know when this is coming out, but it's March, y'all. I mean, you don't don't go out without a jacket in March. That just yeah. sounds, that just sounds like you just trying to be cold. Yeah, anyway, I, we I, won't I little... plans of going to the beach and then I went, yeah, too cold. <laughs> it's March. It's too early. Yeah. So put on the at the very at the very earliest we go by april that's true the very earliest but i mean trying to stay off till may you know because then that's nice and warm anyway we wrote literary life guys with pop poetry before i go on about my tanning and what i do and i thought the voice was bad with other life lessons which somebody like totally pulled up on social media the day that they bought and they were like i love it already i mean seriously they love it already i'm so happy they're like the eighth poem in too i know and they're like i love it already which is I feel like we're gonna let them down though toward the middle. Right? It's gonna, it's gonna be like, I love it all. And then the middle, it just dragged. Anyway, and I thought being grown up was easy. That would mean that book is a roller coaster. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, if only I were me, a memoir and verse, all available audiobook. And I thought I did my journey alone. And there's like a lot more, but y'all can check out it's everything your lady. more, right? Okay, I'm sorry. Continue. Everything your ladies are doing, including the soon to be out 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocate magazine on www.andwethought.com. Or will Nona? You can do the abbreviated <laughs> version and not nearly as sleepy as I am version at www.andithoughtladies.com. All right, but y'all aren't here to hear about us. No, you aren't. You're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce sure. yourself? <laughs> sure. I'm Lori Duffy Foster. I'm a former crime reporter, I'm an author, and I'm a mom to four kids, two of whom are identical twins that I've written about as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so first of all, just being a mom to four kids, good. Four. Great. <laughs> four children. So how did you even manage to put in being a, a journalist at that point? Yeah. Well, I, had my, I didn't have my kids till after I finished my journalism career. I had them late in life. So I was a journalist for 11 years, and... You know, we moved from, my husband got a new job, so we moved from Syracuse to Phoenix, Arizona, and at that time, it just seemed like I found out I was pregnant, and mm -hmm. it seemed like the right time to make the move from fiction, or from journalism to fiction, because that was something I had always wanted to do and knew I would do eventually. Uh, so you, you went from having wonderful winters to just hot? Yes. Very hot. It was hot and dry, and I loved it for a while, and I loved it. We were there four and a half years, but I craved humidity like you wouldn't believe. So I was really happy to come back east. You craved humidity. I did. It sounds silly, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, you, when you have, when every day is sunny, and you never see a cloud in the sky unless there's going to be a huge monsoon, it's just, you, you just crave a, a cloudy day, uh, you know, uh, you want to sit on the grass without worrying about scorpions, you know, things like that. Oh, well, I can understand worrying about scorpions. I, I would absolutely be like, excuse me, yeah, I'm going to need some winter weather now because I had scorpions. I'd be a fiction writer because I'm not coming out of my house. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> let's talk about that transition to fiction writing. How different was it? It was, it was hard to make that transition because in journalism, you're taught to be objective. So your voice is very objective in your writing. And I, toward the end of my journalism career, I started on my master's degree in creative writing. And that helped a lot because that forced me to regain my voice. So, but being a journalist is probably the best preparation for fiction uh, that I could have done because you get so many opportunities to just get into somebody's life, deeply into somebody's life for a few moments and then leave it behind. You know, you, there's so many opportunities to observe human nature and, and learn about things you never would have learned about otherwise. So I, I don't regret at all 
I, I loved my years as a journalist, and I, I, I love the way that I did it. I mm-hmm. think had I written fiction when I was younger, I don't think it would have been as strong. Oh, that sounds like an amazing career. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's, it's hard to kind of do that niche now, but, you know, it's, oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So, like, how was it expanding? Because uh, expanding your format, uh, I think that's how I'm going to go with that. I think well, that no. is. Um, because, you know, when you're a journalist, you, you answer who, what, when, where, why, like, really fast. And yeah. then tell the story. But you only have a certain amount of space on that page. So how was it going into, like, oh, I have hundreds of pages? <laughs> well, in, it's, in reality, the concept's kind of the same. You want to get all that information up there really quickly in journalism. But if you love what you do, you want to pull people through the rest of the story too. You don't want them just reading the headline or reading the first paragraph. You, you as the journalist, you want them to read the rest. So you really learn to be efficient with your words and to be accurate with your words. So I think writing journalism really helped me to write efficiently and to write um, more, with more concrete imagery. Uh, you know, so, and yeah, I do tend to write too fast. And when I write too fast, I need to go back and I need to uh, um, bring in some more elements sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it took me six years to write my first novel because I needed to really learn how to write a novel. After that, it got easier. Then it was only two years after that. And um, so it was definitely a learning process. How many novels do you have? I have five novels and one nonfiction book. I'm under contract for six novels. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so I wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about how you said you're a mom to four children and yet you still found time to write and do all the other things. What was your schedule? How did you find time? Well, that's where I differ from some fiction writers. I don't have a schedule. I write when I can. And... Um, I've taken a little criticism sometimes for prioritizing my kids over my writing, but I think you can do it. I mean, uh, the kids are only young for a certain amount of time, and I'm always writing in my head when I'm not writing on my laptop or on paper. So I always made sure that in every week I had some time to write, but it might be in the play area at McDonald's for two hours. It might be at Panera at, you know, 8 o'clock at night. I just wrote when I could, but everything was always doing in my head all along anyway. So it's, you know, it's a balance, but it's kind of like an incubator period. You know, when the kids were really young, the ideas were developing, the, my skills were developing, and then now the youngest two are 14, and so now is the time when I'm able to finally put myself out there and work on book promotion and selling books, that kind of stuff. All right, so, so let's talk about book promotion and selling. Oh, oh well, okay, well, only yes, question. I wanted to ask the question that I knew everyone was going to want to know is how did you find your query agent? I mean, your literary agent? Um, well, I don't have one right now. I ha- I've been through two literary agents. One was a dud. I never should have signed with him. Big mistake. And the second one was absolutely wonderful. She's still a friend. Um, but, uh, but she wasn't able to sell my books during the four years that we were together. Um, and she was on the verge of retiring. I think she's pretty close. Um, so I decided to, I was going to just take a break uh, from even trying to sell my books for a little while. But then I submitted to a small press, and they offered me a three-book contract. And that, again, was a disaster. <laughs> I shouldn't have signed with them. It was a big mistake. I... Um, Backed my way out of that contract and reached out to someone I knew, um, they, these three women uh, uh, who owned a publishing company that I had watched grow over the past six years, and uh, they offered me a contract for three books and then later, a year later, a contract for my other three. So right now I don't have an agent. I don't know when or if I will again. Love it. Absolutely. I love your journey. I, I love the journey that you made. So what are some pieces of advice you would give authors, especially new people to the business? Um, I would say that you really need to explore all your options. A a lot of people go into this with, um, it's a do or die sort of thing. And they, um, they're either going to get published with the big five. And if they don't, they're a failure, 
or they're going to self-publish because they don't want to, um, they want, you know, there are a lot of good reasons to self-publish. I've done that myself. Uh, but some people go into it thinking that it's not worth it to even try to get an agent and do all that stuff. Um, but you have to be really open-minded. There are, like, for nonfiction, I think self-publishing is great. And for romance and for sci-fi and all that. And um, for, the, and then the big five, there's a lot of advantages to that, but there's a lot of disadvantages. I know people who are B-list or C-list big five and got um, no money for prom promotion, no attention whatsoever, and then they got dumped when they didn't sell enough books. So... For me, um, I, I, don't know, I just listen, be patient. That's the biggest thing. And that's what my second agent really taught me was patience, that um, if it doesn't happen now, give it time, it'll happen later. And, and also be aware. I, I really wish with the first publisher that I had, done, I'd not, I had not gone with my excitement, that I had taken the time to talk to some of the authors more that I had read some of the books by some of the authors, those were, all would have been some red flags there that would have helped me out. Um, but thankfully, they were good enough to let me out of the contract. So it <coughs> worked out. But. So how, how did having a, did you have any writing support while you were writing with the four children and finding the time? Was there any place where you could go for writing support? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear all of that. The, the writing support, like, did, are you a part of any writers groups? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of um, Mystery Writers of America, um, Sisters in Crime, the Historical Novel Association, and also Pen Writers. And Pen Writers I was very involved in um, as an area rep. But I got to tell you, they do so much. Pen Writers does. They, they, those people who volunteer for them, they, they, they work like full-time jobs doing, to make this organization work. And it was too much for me right then with the, the my debut novel novel coming out. But area reps, they, they set up conferences, they do a monthly newsletter, they do blogs, they're doing a lot of outreach and trying to set up critique groups. It's a really great organization. That's fabulous. And I, I many authors that we have on always talk about being involved in the in the writers community because nobody understands that rejection or that like or, or the um, publishing problems or the promotion you have to do behind your book like right. the writers community. Exactly. So you yeah. would highly suggest that to I join. I definitely them. suggest it. And especially the, the feedback you can get is invaluable. The, the, uh, they pull you up when you're feeling down. Uh, the, the advice, they've been, there are a lot of people who have already been through everything you've been through and they can, they can help you when you're stuck. You know, it's, um, I highly recommend being an active part of those organizations, of any writing organization. Wonderful. Thank you so Thank you much. Sharing. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I think that goes to show how important it really is because sometimes you just need someone to be like, yeah, I've been there. And you're like, oh, good. It's not just me. <laughs> That's fabulous. All right. Although, although writing is a solitary thing, <laughs> you, you might still need want, community. you're still going to need that support in that I met my publisher too. Was uh, I met her at Crime Bake, which is um, New England Crime Bake is a, um, a conference. Conferences are important too, and I, I'm, they had bought out a, um, a publisher of, an, of analogies or anthologies. I'm sorry, <laughs> publisher of anthologies, and they they took that company and they built it up slowly, adding more and more novels. So we became friends at Crime Bake, and I was able to watch the publishing company grow through her. So I know I can trust these women with my books. And that, that's huge. I wouldn't have that kind of trust that I have right now if I hadn't been part of these organizations, if I haven't, hadn't gone to conferences and done all that. Fabulous. So where can people find out more about you and what you have going on? And, and buy your, your book. And your, yes, buy your book and your upcoming book. Well, I have a website, um, uh, lauriduffyfoster.com. Uh, a lot of people confuse me with Lori Foster. I'm not her. I wish I had her royalty checks. I mean, she <laughs> does pretty well. I actually know her. We met uh, uh, back in, when we lived in Cincinnati. We lived 20 minutes apart. But, uh, and that's why I go by Lori Duffy Foster, because of that confusion. But um, my novel, A Dead Man's Eyes, comes out April 13th. 
It's actually just now, today, available, available for pre-order on Barnes & Noble. It should be coming up any day now on Amazon. Um, and then I have another book. Actually, I have it right here. This one mm -hmm. is my nonfiction book, Raising Identical, Identical Twins. Um, Identical Twins. All right. That's and that's, it's not a parenting book. It's more about the differences between raising identical twins and raising fraternals or singletons, just like the, the little challenges and differences in, in parenting um, that come up when you're raising identicals. So um, that's where they can find me, and that's where they can find my books. Uh, and I'm available if anybody ever needs to reach out, if they need help, if they need advice, I'm always here and I'm always available. All right, so can you say the website one more time? Uh, yep, it is lauriduffyfoster.com. Fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. It was a lovely time. It was you. so great. I enjoyed it. I learned I a lot. So, I, I, I didn't even know that there was like a mystery bake thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I had no idea. Learned a lot. But well, we don't write mystery. So we'll be because I mystery. read mystery. Yes. I read, I love mystery. Anyway. I'll you can you find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're there, take a moment and listen to the Ladies Tale podcast where the professional actors read one on the script. Also, we have really, really great and funny interviews there. It's not pitch spots. They are hilarious. Oh, yeah, they're they're really all funny. hilarious. So yeah, check that out. Also, but more important than all of that, go to the Ladies tab, go down in the middle and see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them also. And if you want to get all of this information, but you know, just really condense, where do we? www.andithoughtladies.com. Just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it, so peace and love, you guys. From Will No No and Jade. Bye bye. Oh yeah, thanks for listening.